Hi folks, it's Dr. Rob Sivas. I'm the Carb Addiction Doc. And today we're going to talk about something that is often missed by many, many practitioners, many specialists, and yet it's extremely common. A lot of you have occasionally or regularly had, had heartburn, gastroesophageal reflux disease, and we point to this area, we've got some pain here and we feel it here, and it really is acid from the stomach that is acid or even bile, you can have bile reflux coming all the way from the small intestine going through the stomach, but either acid or bile, but a massive change in pH that washes backwards into the lower esophagus, causes spasm, causes misery, and it can be very painful, very uncomfortable, oh, got heartburn, acid reflux. And that reflux, folks, is not caused by caffeine, it's not caused by spicy food, it's not caused by uh, hiatal hernias, although they contribute slightly, it is primarily driven by a hormone called GLP-1 that regulates the emptying of the stomach, that regulates the contraction of the stomach together with the vagus nerve. So GLP-1 triggers gastroesophageal reflux disease, and you can either keep taking your Tums or your Maalox or your Pepto-Bismol or your proton pump inhibitors that cause all kinds of havoc to get rid of it. You can have your hiatal hernia surgery. You can have surgery to... It's not fixing the problem. The problem is carbohydrates that trigger GLP-1, okay? That's for a different discussion. But here's what this discussion is about. We know reflux, we call it, everybody understands, well, everybody has a treatment for it, they don't understand the cause. And if you're taking a GLP-1, if you're taking your Ozempic and stuff, you'll know about it, you're going to feel it worse, especially when you eat a carbohydrate. Um, and if you're a carnivore and you suddenly eat a carbohydrate, you're going to feel that misery, that pounding of your chest, the vagal, the vagus nerve being irritated, the misery of having had a carbohydrate. Um, once my wife tied me up with duct tape, put a funnel in my mouth and poured ice cream down my throat and I felt that. Because I'd never eat carbohydrates. Um, one of the cool things about uh, working with a company like HVMN, uh, who sells Ketone IQ, uh, is that I do get samples. And you know that I'm never, ever, very, very few products, but I'm never going to represent something that isn't integral to my own way of life. However, I want to bring it to your attention. When you come in to see us as a patient and you think you've been thinking about using Ketone IQ, you think it might benefit for you, you're not sure in what ways it might work, please bring that up with me during the consultation. Um, we will give you, we carry right here in the office. Uh, HVMN has been very kind uh, giving us samples. So we have sample boxes of the Ketone IQ. Uh, let's discuss that during your visit. And I'm happy to provide free samples for you to try. It may work, it may not work, but give us a shout. I certainly uh, use these in my own life on a regular basis for various indications. And they just give me that bump, that boost. Uh, there may be a little bit of a placebo effect. I'm sure there is. But there's also a ketogenic effect that's measurable. Give me a shot. Try it for yourself uh, without spending a penny. And then you can decide whether or not you want to incorporate that in your path to metabolic health. Now, here's what we're actually going to talk about. How many of you, on a regular basis, experience sinus Sinuses, sinusitis. Oh, it's my allergies. It's my allergies. It's my sinusitis. I've got a sinus infection. It won't go away. They keep on putting me on antibiotics. I sinus, sinus, sinus. How many of you have Meniere's disease and tinnitus and uh, mastoid cell inflammation, boggy, aching at the back of the side of the head, uh, um, ear infections, eustachian tube, middle ear infections, ringing of the ears, balance issues? How many of you have asthma, adult onset asthma, reactive airway disease, coughing in the middle of the night? How many of you have had that? How many of you occasionally have a hoarse throat or some bitterness in the back of your throat? And then you go and see the ENT doctor. You go and see your family doctor. They put you on antibiotic. After antibiotic, they put you on Zyrtec. They put you on anti-inflammatories. They give you an inhaler for your asthma. Meds, 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 meds. Treat the problem. Oh, you said you got sinusitis. Here's an antibiotic. Go and get some lavage, stick a tube up your nose and wash. Whew. Folks, the most common yet misdiagnosed disease of this area in adults and in kids as well is called LPR, laryngopharyngeal reflux. That is acid reflux that you don't feel down here. You may be on a proton pump any better. You may take your Maalox. You may not even feel it. But it's stuff that when you're laying down, not a huge amount, but it just a few droplets oily droplets, a few droplets of your old food, some of the acid trickles back to the back of your throat, creates some hoarseness, creates some voice changes, <coughs> irritates the back of your throat. Some sinusitis. Why is it always happening? Postnatal drip. 
blocks the eustachian tube between your middle nose and your middle ear, you get ear infections, you get your mastoid infection. It affects the deep part of the ear, inflammation. You get cochlear damage, which is balance, ringing in the ears, Meniere's disease. You aspirate little micro droplets. They can bronch you and they can actually suck that out and test it for lipid droplets. And you have reactive airway disease and asthma and shortness of breath and coughing at night and maybe some central sleep, uh, so at least some sleep apnea. All of those folks are triggered by a hormone called GLP-1, which is tr whose release is triggered by um, uh, uh, carbohydrates that causes changes to the way your stomach should work. Doesn't empty as well, reverse contraction, gas bloat, food stays in there for 12, 14, 18, 24 hours. We tell people on Ozempic now not to eat, uh, not, not to take the medication for two weeks before surgery or not to eat for two days before the surgery because after before that, your stomach can still be full of food two days later. But you're having this reflux. How many of you have not been on antibiotic after antibiotic after antibiotic? Get a swallow study. Not up top here, but get a swallow study to look for reflux. Look at delayed gastric emptying. Look at how your stomach's working and you'll get much better insight into what's going on over here. This is an inflammatory process. And in fact, for those of you with menias and tinnitus that is triggered by LPR, LPR, laryngopharyngeal reflux, Google it. An interesting drug that seems to be working very, very well, and I've looked for solutions for menias, is a drug called meloxicam. It's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. But one of my patients told me that meloxicam helped with their tinnitus and their, and their balance and their ring in the ears. Gary Taubes, one of the guys in our inner circle, has to wear hearing aids to deal with his offsetting against that ringing in his ears so he can focus. But try meloxicam, 7.5 milligrams or 15 milligrams once or twice a day, and let me know if it works for the tinnitus and the meniers. I've had several patients right now report when we've prescribed or suggested, hey, take it a couple of times and see what happens. Oh yeah, it's making me better. I don't know to what extent, but it's treating the inflammation from the LPR. And if you go on a carnivore diet and you decrease your GLP-1 responsiveness and your stomach empties more easily, when your acid reflux goes away, your LPR goes away and your sinusitis clears up. It happened to me. I know I've got a bit of a cold right now, but my sinuses are normally very, very clear. Whereas before, I always carried handkerchiefs and tissues with me when I was eating a lot of carbohydrates when I was fat because I always had persistent sinusitis. And it was sterile. It wasn't full of bacteria and things. It was LPR. My voice was different. I had reactive airway disease. LPR. Make sure you help your doctor to understand reflux, but also make sure you understand it. Get rid of the carbohydrates. Make your reflux go away and magically... When you get rid of carbohydrates, and especially the grain, the pro-inflammatory grain product carbohydrates, this goes away. Hmm. Google it. LPR. Help your doctor to help you. Not with antibiotics and other crap. Maybe some non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for a little while and getting rid of carbohydrates. And if you need help doing that, if you need help with a diagnosis, we've got a machine right here that can look for that. We've got a machine right here in my office. It's so common. Fluoroscopy machine. We can look for this. If this has made you think and you're interested in understanding whether you have LPR or not, give me a shout. 561-517-0642. Not only can we help you to figure it out, but we can also treat the problem at root cause. If you're willing to roll up your sleeves, Actually, you know what? Don't roll your sleeves up. Cut them off. Throw them away. You're never going to need them again. Because it's hard work. If you want to get rid of your LPR, this works. I am the carbon addiction doc. If there's value to this, if, you see, if this is the aha moment you've been looking for for decades like I was, throw me a buck. Patreon, PayPal. It's in the show notes. Support this program to be free. And hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. It helps us also. Google throws us a few bucks as well. Till next time.